What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and we got more details about the Green Lantern show for HBO Max and as exciting as it is to finally get more details about it, at the same time when you see who's involved in this project and you see the Green Lanterns that they're going to be focusing on, I think the worry that it's going to go woke, that it's going to be very Arrow vs. CW like, the potential is definitely there. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the good things and what I think could be the bad things about this series and about who's working on it. Now, uh, we got this announcement. Green Lantern, Seth Graham Smith to write, show run HBO Max series. Now, Seth Graham Smith is not someone that I've known. I don't think he's been a showrunner on any show that I can find, at least in his history. So it's going to be interesting, the fact that he is the showrunner. Now, Jeff Johns was initially rumored to be the showrunner for this, and I think that had a lot of people worried, especially after what we saw with the 2011 Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. Now, he is coming off a... I would say fairly successful show running for Stargirl, even though the behind the scenes, we heard it was rife with issues there. But let's get into the details of who else we recognize that's going to be working on this show and why I'm worried that it could just be more of the same when it comes to DC TV. Mark Guggenheim, co-creator of the Arrowverse, will co-write the inaugural episode. HBO Green Lantern series has powered up its lantern landing its showrunner. Seth Graham Smith the novelist turned screenwriter of such movies as the Lego Batman movie, so the screenwriter for that, will act as showrunner of the DC Comics-based series and co-write the inaugural episode with Mark Guggenheim, the co-creator of DC shows Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow. Green Lantern, a one-hour drama, has been given 10 episodes straight to series order. It hails from Berlanti Productions, again, Berlanti Productions and Warner Brothers Television. Berlanti, Gregor Berlanti, another co-creator of the Arrowverse, is the, is the producer of all those CW shows. So another reason to maybe be a little hesitant. But we did kind of know this going in. Greg Berlanti and Jeff Johns, the comics author turned DC show creator, were involved in the 2011 Green Lantern movie, as was Guggenheim. So three of the people that are involved in this were also involved in the 2011 movie Green Lantern. Now, I just need to say this about Jeff Johns. We have all these rumors about there going out about Jeff Johns, all the Ray Fisher stuff. Um, ignoring all of that drama and all of that controversy. Jeff Johns, I think, is a great comic book writer. I think he's awful when he gets on set. I, I don't think he has any idea what he's doing. I think he completely fucked up Justice League and was behind a lot of the nonsense going around back there. Uh, I think he should stay away from the TV set. Stick to writing books. Jeff Johns is an amazing comic book writer, in my opinion. That is what he should be doing, but that's just me. While the movie didn't shine at the box office, the show is being seen as a way to course correct and reintroduce one of the longest lasting names in superhero comics. Now, this is where I think that a lot of people are going to be focusing on. It will feature a host of Green Lanterns, the galactic police officers that patrol the known and unknown universe. The show will focus on Earth-centric lanterns, Guy Gardner, Jessica Cruz, Simon Baz, and Alan Scott. Now, when you look at those four Green Lanterns, you have one. You have one in Guy Gardner, who is a man's man, kind of toxic masculinity wrapped up in a Green Lantern. That's who Guy Gardner is. So I'd, I'd, I'd love to see a real true to, true to form Guy Gardner on screen. I think that would be awesome. But when you look at the other Lanterns, I think that for those people that are worried that this might go the route of identity politics... There's a lot of things to worry about here. Simon Baz. If you don't know who these characters are, real quick overview. Simon Baz is a Lebanese-American uh, from Dearborn, Michigan, who when he was younger got caught up. He, he stole a car and it had a bomb in it. He got arrested for being a terrorist and he his entire life they were judged because of the color of their skin and because of the fact that they were Muslim. So I can really see a way that they would take that and use it to, to put some form of identity politics in the show. Jessica Cruz. Jessica Cruz is a Hispanic Green Lantern. She has a, I would say she has a disability. She has agoraphobia. She is literally scared to go outside. It's one of the sh things she has to overcome while becoming a Green Lantern. So I could definitely see the route they could take her. And then of course, Alan Scott. Now Alan Scott, the first Green Lantern, who DC already nearly a decade ago, decided to change his sexuality. They decided to turn him into a gay man. And that's a lot of what we're seeing now. Look at this. 
Uh, the Green Lantern HBO Max series includes Gay Hero, introduces new core members. That's what a lot of these stories now are focused on. The fact that, ooh, they're going to have a gay Green Lantern, guys. And if you know the story of Alan Scott, I mean, you know that they rebooted his sexuality. Dan DiDio, back in 2012, I think, let's see. Uh, comic Yeah, in 2012, co last week, Comic Rift reported that DC co-publisher Dan DiDio suggested during London's Kapow that a major DC character would be coming out. And when they say coming out, they mean retconning him. They mean changing him from a straight man to a gay man, because that's what they did with Alan Scott. Now, Alan Scott is going to be very involved in this TV series. So when you look at those things, that doesn't mean that it's going to be woke. That doesn't mean it's going to be bad. But... When you have the same people that were involved in the CW Arrowverse, you have them working with these characters, it, it immediately sets off alarm bells to me. Uh, now, the fact that we don't have Hal Jordan, that we don't have Jon Stewart, that we don't have Kyle Rayner, why is that? A lot of people are speculating it's because we might see them in a future movie, we might see them further in the DCU, and they don't want to use them for this TV series. Now, that is exciting to me, uh, because... Those are probably my, eh, maybe Guy Gardner might be a little bit above Kyle Rayner in my book, but I still love Kyle Rayner. But those are my three, three of my favorite Lanterns. I love those guys. So the idea that they might be doing something in the DCU, I think is a good thing. It'd be nice if we could get maybe a cameo appearance here or there, but of course they'd have to be actually be established in the DCEU for that to happen. And for that to happen, they'd have to actually be moving forward with these projects. So just, you know, thinking about this, thinking about these characters being involved, I worry that uh, we're going to see a situation where Guy Gardner gets, you know, put in his place kind of thing. And I, I hope that that's not the case because Guy Gardner is, is a badass character. But seeing the people that are involved in this, imagining him being the kind of badass that he was on, you know, on in the comic book pages, that's a little worrisome to me. Uh, it still could be awesome, and I have no idea what we're going to get from, you know, Seth Graham Smith as a showrunner, because I don't think he's ever showrun anything before. So, hopefully it all turns out well. You guys know me, I'm a huge DC guy. I, I want this series to be awesome. I think that the Green Lanterns, the Green Lantern core, is one of the most interesting things in DC Comics. And it's some of my favorite books, some of my favorite storylines revolve around the Green Lanterns, especially a lot of the stuff. A lot of the stuff that, you know, Ethan Van Skyver and Jeff Johns did, kind of bringing Hal Jordan really back to the forefront of DC Comics. We'll see how it goes, I suppose. But I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Do you think that this show has the potential to go woke when you look at the people involved in it, when you look at the characters that they're going to be using? Jessica Cruz, you know, a Latina with a disability, if you would consider agoraphobia a disability. Simon Baz, a Muslim American who's been discriminated against his entire life because of his color and his religion, who is falsely accused of being a terrorist. And of course, Alan Scott, someone who they have turned gay. Let me know in the comments below. Smash a like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my PO box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.